Today here at Fixed, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the connectors on an Apple Watch screen. This is an Apple Watch Series 2, 38mm display. I had a customer try to do the repair themselves, and they mangled each one of the connectors, and so we're going to be uh, replacing those. Today I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. They're very small. Here's a little hinge. Uh, it's easiest to uh, start with these separate from the... Uh, actual connector themselves. There's a penny for comparison. Let's get started. Now these connectors are super small, super tedious. One of the things that we have in the way is this edge of glass that we have to remove. So getting a pair of safety glasses and some pliers. And we're gonna break off the edges. Now this looks a little dangerous. I have never damaged a display doing this. And I fixed hundreds of watches. But I need to do it in order to have access to the uh, edge of, of the pieces. So let's move the connectors out of the way so we don't lose them. And we're gonna take a little bit of alcohol and use it to help us pry up this sticker. This is a heat sink sticker. And we're also gonna pry up the uh, digitizer connector because that is uh, going to eventually be replaced anyway. Let's clean up our workspace and uh, pull out our uh, heat plate. All right, now I'm gonna have this uh, suction down so that I can take uh, my wire and cut in between the different layers of the display. Here you'll see that I'm gonna be removing the, uh, uh, the whole cable that is for the actual display itself. So you have to get the wire in between the right layer. It takes a little it takes quite a bit of precision to make sure you're always cutting in the right spot. Being gentle to make sure that I'm in the right spot every time and also especially as you get towards the end there's a secondary uh flex cable that uh you have to make sure doesn't delaminate from the uh the uh, wa the flex cable there, so you need to make sure the wire gets under that section right there at the very end if you're going to ever try this repair, which I don't know why you would because this isn't a, a, a very practical repair. It is just something that can be done to save some money if you have the skills and knowledge to do so. Next thing we're going to do is remove the other piece um, for uh, from the screen because uh, we, we're going to be doing uh, some solder work to remove these connectors and the amount of heat that we're going to need would definitely damage the display. And so uh, removing these is the only way to do that without hurting the display. So again, we'll use the wire to cut under there and separate the uh, um, this uh, section of the screen from the actual display. I use alcohol to help loosen the adhesive. Once the alcohol dries, it will become tacky again and it'll allow me to stick it down. You can see the sensor there through the back. That'll look through the actual display. It's kind of cool. You can see where the adhesive isn't on the back. So there is the uh, the display. All right. Next, what we'll do is we're gonna. I'm going to get out my little vice clamp here that I use for soldering to hold logic boards and things like that. We'll clean away any of the extra adhesive that's visible because it will definitely melt um, because we're going to be using hot air to remove this. So I'm going to take a little bit of flux and apply it to the connector. And the uh, the connector is made of two different types of plastics and this uh, the actual flip connector here I'm pulling away with the tweezers. It melts really easily uh, versus where the other connector can take a lot more, or the other piece of plastic can take a lot more heat. So using a heat gun, 
I've got it set to a fairly high temperature with a low airflow. I'm going to slowly sneak up on it until it's uh, uh, until the solder's uh, in a liquid state, so that I can simply push the connector right off, and then I pull the heat away after the connector is away from the solder joints. We'll add a little bit more flux to this, and because it's such a thin uh, surface. Uh, uh, it doesn't have a huge thermal mass. I don't really have to worry about applying a different type of solder, like a lower melt solder. I can just use the exact uh, solder. And if you're wondering how uh, or where I got these connectors, um, I desoldered them from another dead uh, display, um, one that had a broken LCD, uh, because these connectors aren't something that you can purchase. So uh, you're going to have to do that if you're you're wanting to attempt this repair which again I don't know why you'd want to do that so using heat uh, I will uh, nudge the connector into place once the uh, solder is liquefied and that should allow me to uh, have it uh, flow into place you can see on either side there that the solder joints are solid and although it looked like that was really easy it's not that easy because of its size um, and because of how careful you have to be. We'll take the other connector now and we're going to place it in the same way. Take the connector off of that one as well. Sometimes these connectors are saveable and so I, I like to, to save them if I can. I'm going to remove this sticker here. And we're going to add some flux and do the same process we did on the other one. We're going to sneak up on it with a bit of heat. And if you're wondering, I have my temperature set to like 500 degrees on my station, but each station is going to be different, so don't bother asking me in the comment section below what temperature and airflow, because my answer won't be the, what your machine would do. You just have to find that sweet spot where it'll work. And I'll go ahead and add flux now that the connector's off, and we're going to repeat the process like we did on the other side by placing the connector, lining it the best we can, making sure all the pins are lined up with their solder joints, and then uh, flowing it into place, giving it a little nudge to make sure that it sits down properly um, once uh, uh, once the, the solder's in a liquid form. We'll add a little bit more flux to help uh, help this out. Being gentle not to knock off the small connector uh, as we do that. Sneak in with the heat once it's in a liquid state. We'll nudge the connector. We have it slightly over. Just barely. There it goes. It kind of pulls itself into place with the surface tension there, and we'll let that cool. There you go. You can see each solder joint. I look under my microscope, of course, this whole time just to make sure I, I have all those joints solid. And they definitely are. I don't have to go back through, and although I could go back through with a solder iron and and, e and check each one, I, I don't have to do that. to get the camera to focus here. A little tricky, but 
you can see the sheen that's normally enough for those of you who solder um, to, to see that okay those are those are good joints and then we'll uh, we'll take it out of the clamp I do use a little bit of alcohol just to make sure I, I release this without cracking the the thin uh, the thin board there of, uh, that's attached to that ribbon cable gently pulling it away I did that on the, on the other one although I skipped it in the video now that we've got them soldered on we're gonna go ahead and gently place that back on the actual display and align it up exactly where it was before And then we'll fold up the uh, the other side and align it back up with the top corner and put that sticker back. And then put the heat uh, sink sticker back there. Now let's go ahead and uh, and test it. Wait, we're missing something. <laughs> Forgot to put the connectors on, so let's go ahead and put those on. Now this is tedious work. It's tricky. Spend a couple minutes trying to get you each one of these lined up and pushed in. They, uh, they like to fly away. I edited out quite a few minutes of it just bouncing around. Uh, believe it or not, it's uh, even though it looks like it's taking me uh, a long time and that it's not playing well with me, it took a long time to get these in. Even though I've done them quite often, I've done them quite a few times, but this one in particular, I don't know why, it just took me like five minutes to get it connected, so... I was, I was done. Done. But I had to do the next one, so same story. Except this one went a little quicker. But flew away from me a couple times as well. I mean, these connectors are tiny. You can see it compared to my nail there. This thing is so small. And uh, there's 20 pins that it has to, to go through on that one. And on the one we did before, is 24 pins. All right, now that the stressful part's over, let's go ahead and connect it. Now, the uh, customer has uh, did damage the, the flex cables a little bit here. Um, there you can see it kind of got scraped there. And we'll connect it and we'll try to test it but uh i found out it wasn't coming on and really the only way to know if this display in the first place was working was going to be replacing those cameras but it didn't turn on and so i got a charger just to see if that would work and that didn't so uh we're gonna try uh to connect the screen because i'm pretty confident it still works i'm gonna connect it to another apple watch and see if it works there I've got it connected to a new one I'll go ahead and plug that one in because it was dead as well and as you can see it's a little faint there let me adjust the lighting there you go you can see the charging symbol on the display so yay we've got it working again uh, the display is working once more um, here you can see another part where we actually got the battery to charge up a little bit on that other Apple Watch that I have. Um, you can see that it's turning on and working. Um, so that's how to replace the connectors on the display. Um, it's, it's tricky. Thanks for watching. Yeah.